Absolve me, fathers. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. It is a great joy to be back here at HTC, to, to take part in, in the liturgy here with a beautiful congregation that loves the Lord. Every time I come here, I see so much growth, so much um, maturity in the people that I that I encounter. God bless the, the fathers and their great work here with, with the people here. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today's readings are so strange. They're so odd. And as you look at them and you read them, I want you to imagine like there's a lot of funny stories in today's readings. If you read the book of Acts, St. Paul and his disciples are preaching in a city. They're preaching in Ephesus. And somebody told the people who make the idols, these people are going to destroy our business and they're going to make everybody not care about the, the temple of, of Diana of the Ephesians, listen to this part. They said our trade is at risk and everything is going to happen uh, bad towards the, the temple of Diana. It says when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized the disciples of Paul. And when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. And listen to this. It said, some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. I want you to imagine, there's a lot of hesa, there's like craziness, everyone, everyone is screaming, and all of a sudden everyone runs into the theater, everyone is screaming and fighting, and nobody knows why they're there. That's what the Bible's telling us. Nobody knows why they're there. Even later on in the story it says, For we are in danger being called into question for today's uproar. There being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. Confusion. People are just following confusion. Later on in today's gospel, as we heard the gospel, the, the owner of the vineyard sends out vine dressers to work in his vineyard. What is the obvious expectation? That they're going to bring fruit and give it back to the owner. It's obvious. And as the, the owner of the vineyard is sending people to re reap the fruits, they say, no, these fruits are ours. La. You guys are my you guys are my employees. You're supposed to be bringing the fruit, and they send they take the first people that come, they kill them. Next people they beat them. Then he says, of course, if I send my son, of course, if I send my son, they're going to respect him and follow the rules. And they took the son and they killed him. More confusion. What I want to speak to us this morning is this concept of being confused. Being confused, so many people don't know the path of God or the will of God in their life and they're just following confusion. As I was reading the readings this morning, I'm trying to find out, Lord, what is the connection of all of these readings? And as I read this funny story of the book of Acts, I said, it's just confusion. People are going and doing things and they don't know why they're doing them. The, the, the vineyard owner, he owns land and he hires people to work in the land. He's going to pay them and they're going to bring them the fruit of the land. And he's expecting that they're going to bring fruit. And they're not bringing fruit. Why did I hire you? Why are you there? Do you even know what you're doing there? Here, there is so much confusion. How do people become confused of the direction in which they should be in their life. How is it that people become confused spiritually? Not knowing the things of God. Sometimes even we, the people of God in the church, don't even know why we're here. We don't even know, like, what is all of this for? And we come and we go through the motions and we go through so many, uh, uh, like, routines we wake up and say, one day we're going to stand before the throne of God and we're going to have to present something. We're going to have to present the fruit of our life. And the Lord is going to say, okay, I'm ready for you to bring forth the fruit that you're supposed to, that you were working in my vineyard. You were working in the world. You were working in my church. You were working. Okay, bring the fruit. You say, I don't know what you're talking about. God is saying, what are you, like, what's going on here? You, I sent you into the world to serve to work, to glorify me, to be close to me, to experience me, to shine in the world. You say, oh, sorry, like I, like I got a job, 
And then I got married and I had some kids. And then I, you know, I, you know, I bought some properties. And God is going to look like, what are you talking about? And we are going to be so confused. There's so much confusion. I'm standing before the throne of God one day. And I don't know why I'm standing here. And I don't know what I'm supposed to be presenting. We have, um, we, we have a school in our church back at home. And there was a time where we had many open positions. And they scheduled all of these people to come and interview me. And I didn't know who was coming in for which position. And so somebody's coming in and I'm asking them questions. And they're looking at me like, do you know why we're here? And I had no idea which position I'm interviewing for because I had such a long line of people. And I'm saying, I was so confused. And the people in front of me are so confused. Confusion is what is going to make so many people go far from the path of God. How do people get confused? How is it that people get so confused that they don't know the will of God for their life? You have to understand the world is pouring into your mind, into your heart all day through the things you watch, the things you listen to, social media, the world, the world, the world, us and our children and everyone around us. And that when we start to hear even spiritual things, we don't get it. We see this a lot in the ministry that as we're sitting with people, we're sitting with people either coming, they don't get spiritual things. You say, how did you get to this point? You say, I don't know. I got lost in the path. I just found myself just going through the motions. I got distracted. I found myself going down a, a different path. But today is a challenge for each and every one of us to say, Lord, why am I here? What is it that you want from my life? Because one day I'm going to have to stand before him. And I'm going to have to present the fruit of my life and say, okay, Lord, you put me in Chino Hills, California, or in Washington, D.C., or I'm coming from wherever place, and I'm going to have to stand before God. And I'm going to say, okay, Lord, this is what I did. I loved others. I served. I spent time praying for the people around me. I had a heart of compassion for people that were rejected. Nowadays, as society is changing, society is changing. And there are people that are broken in our society. And there are people that are totally lost in the world. And it is their expectation that the people in the church know the direction. That they have the map to the place of joy. That they have the map and the path to fulfillment and to meaning and to why we're here. And if the church is lost, then everybody's lost. And this is something that challenges each and every one of us. Last week, as we heard the gospel of last Sunday, and it was that the feeding of the 5,000. And the Lord told the disciples, you give them something to eat. And they said, no, we only have five loaves and two fish, send them away. And Jesus said, no. I'm sending my disciples into this multitude of people. You have a responsibility. You give them something to eat. There are people that are broken. There are people that are hurting. There are people that are confused. And maybe the church itself is even confused on how to deal with the way the world is changing. The LGBTQ movement, it's, ch it's changing the world. And there are people that are broken and there are people that are hurting. We're saying, no, 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 we don't need these people here. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You are the, the healers of the world. People are trying to find healing in the church. We're saying, no, 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 we don't need like confusion in our churches. See, what's wrong with you? You forgot why you're here. You forgot that you're supposed to be bringing healing to the world, opening the eyes of the blind, healing the brokenhearted, setting people free. And we're saying, no, 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 no. Keep the strange people out. That's exactly what the story of the vineyard owner is. He's saying, I sent people into the vineyard to work in the vineyard, to bring the lost in, to open the eyes of people that don't know what they're doing in the world. We're saying, no, no, no. this is for us. This vineyard is for us. And the church would be, at that point, judged by the Lord. You say, what about... People that are broken. I had a young girl tell me, Abuna, I'm struggling with 
with homosexuality. And she told me how broken she was. She told me, she said, Abuna, I, I'm confused. She said, like, if you were to bring me the most handsome boy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't notice anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel anything. And she was hurting. She was struggling. And I began to look with her. And for the first time, I believe that Jesus gave me his eyes. That Jesus gave me his eyes to say, no, 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 send them away. Shh, get this lady out of here. What do you think Jesus would have done? Come, my daughter. I love you. Come. Let me show you the path of life. Let me show you fulfillment. And I began to ask her. I said, tell me about your family. She said, my father abused me. And my mother did God knows what. And this terrible story. And I'm looking to her. And here we have. We're forgetting why we're supposed to be in this world. We, the church, we are supposed to be healers of the world. And I began to tell her, I said, how much Jesus loves her. And how much Jesus is crazy about her. She began to cry. She said, nobody ever told me that. I'm like, what do you mean you never, nobody ever told you that? Do you go to church? She said, yeah. She said, nobody's ever told me that. I said, what are we doing? What are we, the church, doing when the world is broken and God sent us into his vineyard to show love to a broken world and to heal a broken world and we're lost and we're confused and we don't know why we're here. We don't know what we're doing. Our homes are supposed to be glorifying God and be icons of love to the people around us. But our homes are places of arguing and, and division and fighting we're lost. Today's gospel is a challenge to us. It's a challenge that the vine, the vineyard owner is asking the vine dressers, all right, how far are we coming along on our mission? Don't be confused. The path of God is clear. If the world is, is, is brainwashing you and showing you another way, you're going to be so confused. You're going to be so lost. And the Lord is and he's trying to show us the way. He's trying to show us the fruit. When we celebrated the ascension, when Christ ascended to heaven after his resurrection, he ascended to heaven. And it says he, he offered up the first fruits to the Father. What were the first fruits? We were the first fruits. As the Lord Jesus went to the Father to present fruits to the Father to say, Father, I brought the fruits with me. All of us, he presented all of us before God the Father. That was the mission. That was the mission of the Son. And that is the mission of the church. The church are healers. How can you be a healer? The day you were baptized, you were anointed with three different oils. The oil is called the which is the oil of gladness. Of grafting, I'm going to explain grafting. Is. I want you to have, have a, a, a tree. A dying. I want to save this dying. It's not producing any fruit. You break off the branch and you. Okay. You dig a hole in the living tree. You stick in this dying branch. You tape them together or tie them together. Okay. And the life that is in this living tree is flowing through the dying branch, and it should do what? Produce new fruit. You are the dying branch when before you were baptized and you were ripped off the dying tree of Adam or the dying vine of Adam and you were stuck into Christ and everything that is in Christ should be flowing through you. Your words should be the words of love, the words of truth, the words that, that convict others. Your life, your works, everything that comes out of your heart the way that you think, all of that should be coming from Christ. And she says, okay, how do I do that? I go into my room and I shut the door and I get on my knees and I say, Lord, fill me. Everything that is in you, give to me. Everything that is in Christ should, should be in me. And we pray that in the, in the, in the Our Father. We say, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth, in me, and in heaven, in you. 
We're saying, let your will be done. As is in Jesus, so is in me. So you should do in me. And that is the work of Christ. That every day, partaking of the sacraments. The sacraments are meant to transform you. They're meant to make you something different. You're not coming here for a blessing. You're not coming here to make yourself feel good. You're not coming here just in case God were to, to, to judge me for not taking communion. So I'm here to take communion. I'm coming here to be transformed, to be like Christ, to have the eye of Christ. When I see a broken world and people that need healing, my eyes see them with love. That we open up the church to the people on the outside and we say, this is the place of life. This is the place that those, the dying branches in the world should be grafted into Christ. That they would have life also. So today, as we read all of these very, very funny stories in the gospel, the people in Ephesus that are making an uproar about Paul and how he's preaching and everyone's going to stop worshiping Diana and they're coming and everyone's shouting for two hours. The Bible says, great is the, uh, Diana of the Ephesians. Non-stop. Great is the... Why are we here? The Bible says nobody knows why they're there. And today God is telling you, you have to know why you're here. Why God gave you your children. Why God gave you your neighbor. And why your neighbor. The other day, my, my, my neighbor's going through something. He came to ask me to get his mail. He's going on vacation. Could you please grab my mail and any packages? And then I said, is there anything else? And he broke down and started crying. This is, one of, this is a very tough neighbor. He gives all of it comes to visit us, he gives them a hard time about where they park and they're too close to my dress. He's a very difficult person. And he started breaking down and crying. He said, I need support. I need help. So he went to his house. We went to his backyard, chatting and talking. He said, Paul, I don't believe it's by chance that you're my neighbor. He says, I believe that God wanted us to be neighbors. This is like a person that doesn't know God, doesn't know anything. He said, I believe that you're meant to be my neighbor. And that was like a conviction to me that God is trying to tell me there is a fruit that I'm expecting of you. I put you on that street next to that guy, the most annoying guy in the whole neighborhood. That's your neighbor for a reason. You have to bring that fruit to me. That's what the Lord is telling us today. Can you look to your life today and say, what fruit am I bringing? Who am I helping? Who am I serving? Where is my sacrifice? What can I offer that is a sweet fruit before the Lord that says, Lord, you sent me into the vineyard to bring you this, to bring you these virtues and to bring you this smiling face and to bring you this loving heart and to bring you these lost souls. This is why you sent me into the world, Lord, and I'm here to fulfill that mission. May the Lord grant us the ability to not be confused anymore. To not be confused to know the direction that God has for each and every one of us that we would produce the fruit of our life. Last thing is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, long uh, uh, self-control. All of these are the fruit that one day you say, this is when the Spirit is in me. Flowing out of me, this is what comes out of me. But if this is not what's coming out of me, I lost my way. I'm that dying branch. I've, I've severed myself from Christ and I don't know what should be working in me and how I should be living. May the Holy Spirit bring fruit from our life and may we present beautiful fruit to the Father and glory be to God forever.